Hello and welcome to Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. My name is Jason Newland and this uh, also involves Andre Dooley Newland, the ferret who has decided to jump on the bed and accompany me by trying to be naughty so don't worry he's not going to be part of the re <laughs> recording but he seems to want my attention for some reason and this does happen occasionally it hasn't happened many, many times with these recordings it does happen on my let me bore you to sleep ones quite a lot for some reason but maybe it's because those ones last for about an hour and he likes he just likes to get cuddled and stuff have cuddles don't you yeah so only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes Now, I know I've talked in previous recordings, or at least one of them, about the benefits of getting yourself a pet, getting yourself, uh, it can be anything, it could be a dog, a cat, for me it the benefit is the physical contact you know being able to just stroke him and cuddle him and dogs definitely offer that I'm sure a lot of cats can as well It's all kind of dependent, isn't it? Cats, cats kind of have their own uh, their own agenda. But my nan used to have cats, and they'd always be sitting on her lap, always very loving. But this recording isn't about pets. This is about fear. I was just reading Roosevelt, President Roosevelt saying, the only thing to fear is fear itself. And kind of disagree with that in a, in a way and what I mean by that is it's okay to sometimes be fearful It's okay to sometimes be scared. It's okay to sometimes feel stressed. It's okay to sometimes feel anxious. Just as it's sometimes, you know, it's okay to feel blissfully happy. It's okay to be in love, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to have all those emotional responses, it's part of being human, and I think if we try and start blocking out 
one emotion or one part that we don't like we may end up blocking out the good stuff as well which seems like a shame get down see when I'm holding Andre and I talk sometimes he, he just looks at me and he falls asleep and then he wakes up and he looks at me like well, how did I get here who are you what do you want because he's half asleep. he's half asleep I kind of think of it as like a, a drawbridge you know castles you know the old days when and um, there'd be a castle we've all seen it in movies and more recently probably like Game of Thrones but also in uh, like the Hobbit thing you know those kind of films where there'd be a drawbridge and there'd be a moat like a big Moat, which is basically just a ditch with water in it around the castle and the drawbridge would be pulled up so that nothing could enter but also nothing could leave so they'd have that drawbridge pulled up so no one could enter with weapons to hurt them but at the same time, no one could enter with food to feed them. So it could, could end up being physically safe, but then starving. Which would be kind of the equivalent of pulling our own drawbridge up. putting that wall up you know so that we can't feel anxiety or stress or any of that emotional pain so that can't get through the drawbridge to affect us in the way that maybe it did before and it makes sense to want to do something like that it really you know logically of course it makes sense to want to pull that drawbridge up to stop the arrows of pain and uh, the soldiers and the army whatever however you want to think about it which is actually quite a violent way to think about it because ultimately their emotions they're neither good nor bad they're not evil they're not wonderful they're just they're just feelings ultimately they're just responses because we're human and that's natural to have emotional responses we all do yet if you put that drawbridge up to stop the the feelings that are uncomfortable put it that way the feelings that are painful whether it be panic, anxiety, stress or emotional discomfort of any kind At the same time, you're also blocking out the nice stuff, the lovely feelings, the feelings of well-being, feelings of relaxation, feelings of peace of mind, calmness. And in a way, if you keep that drawbridge up, no matter what you do, it's going to kind of have limited effect 
in a sense of personal development or trying to help change those situations and help to change how you think and feel about things if you're not letting anything in. Kind of would be the equivalent of me going to the gym and sitting on an exercise bike whilst eating a Big Mac. It just it would just be very silly. Although now I've said it I feel quite hungry. But it's kind of pushing against yourself which is a choice because anything that I say it's just ideas it's just thoughts with this podcast sometimes I'll do a relaxation session sometimes I'll talk about panic attacks sometimes I'll talk about anxiety I'll talk about my own experiences as well And I went through a period when I had that drawbridge up. And one of the things I did to do that was alcohol. Trying to block out the feelings. And the feelings I had was, at that time, was feelings of Not so much depression, at times depression. I didn't realise I, I had bipolar at the time. But, you know, mood swings. If I felt crappy, I felt in a bad mood, I'd drink to try and change my mood. If I felt in a good mood, I'd drink. Kind of to celebrate. And drinking alcohol... Maybe not for everyone, but for, you know, it's kind of standard knowledge in the medical world that drinking alcohol uh, only increases depression. But again, it's not going to be the same for everybody. It's so easy just to generalise even the stuff that's useful. But we can generalise it, but not necessarily going to be for everybody which is why I don't make just one recording and then leave it there it's why I do more and more recordings because everyone's different everyone's got a different perspective everyone's had a different life and If you get one thing, one sentence resonates with you during this 30 minutes or so that I'm talking, then it's been worth it because if you like me, when I hear something and I listen to a lot of positive uh, positivity inspirational stuff sometimes I hear something and it just keeps churning around in my head and that same process happens or has happened in the past with negative thinking as well maybe someone said something to me which was painful I had a painful emotional response and I'd keep repeating it in my head which was of no use and it just hurt me more caused more pain for me but that same process used with a positive statement uh, you know a healthy statement the same exact process of rethinking and keep thinking about it is transformational in a wonderful way 
and we all pro process things differently. Our brains work differently. Our minds are all different. Which means some f way of thinking that you may have that may seem like you know, detrimental to your well-being might seem like it gets in the way of your happiness. It might actually be a really good way of thinking if you just fill that gap with something different. So, for example, I'll give you an example. If um, I used to get told that One yeah, one thing that's bugged me for years that people saying to me, "Why is it free?" Uh, one thing that people said to me in the past is, "No one appreciates free stuff. They don't appreciate if it's free." And I've been doing this this free recordings, videos, and audios since two thousand and six, and I've reached uh, quite a big number of people over that time with various projects I've done online and that disturbed me that sentence so I'll give you a, that's an example of a sentence that upset me that I reacted and I was told this the first time I was actually told this that sentence was I remember it very clearly because the day before I went into the hospital to visit my friend's husband who had stomach cancer and he had to have medical procedure and he refused to have it unless I came and helped him to calm down and to prepare for it using hypnosis. So I did, I went there after work, I saw him, I did what he wanted me to do, I calmed him down, and he had the process, the procedure, and it went okay, you know, it went a lot better because the last time he had the procedure, it kind of traumatised him a bit, well, a lot, so I, able, I was able to help him. And then I left and you know went home went to bed got up the next day went to work I worked in insurance at the time this is in 2006 and I met up with a friend a Buddhist friend of mine and we had lunch in it was actually it was in a graveyard but it was a, like a public place where people used to go and eat lunch and stuff Sounds a bit weird, but it's like an old church. And he said to me, I was talking about my free hypnosis because I had a free chronic pain relief service that I was offering locally, the free stuff I was doing online that I just started doing. And he said that nobody appreciates stuff that's free. And all I thought about was the man that I saw the day before, my friend's husband, and how that was free. I didn't charge him, and he really appreciated what I did, or what we did together. He appreciated that. So I knew that that was wrong you know what he was saying to me it might be right with some people some people don't appreciate anything some people you know it's different people are different but to say that everybody nobody appreciates it so that bugged me and he was wrong and then recently I was listening to a, a recording of a, a man called Dan Piena and he said one statement is show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Sh 
show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I've got it written on my door. I actually wrote it down. Because it makes so much sense. Who you spend time with affects your life, affects how you think, how you behave. It does me anyway. It's not that I'm really easily led, but I think sometimes I might be. Maybe a bit of a pushover, a bit of a kind of go out of my way to help people that maybe don't deserve as much as I give. Or maybe, you know, maybe taking advantage sometimes. So you put that in the middle, you chain, you swap it over. So me thinking at the time, all I was thinking about in 2006 for probably, it kept in my mind for years if I'm honest, but it wasn't something that I, I didn't get too excited about it, but I used to think about it and I talk about it sometimes that people don't appreciate free stuff. And that continuously uh, led me to continue what I was doing. It gave more effort, more energy, put more energy, more wind behind my sail to continue helping people for free and to expand it outside of just my town where I was living, but to the rest of the country and the rest of the world. And using that same technique, which is naturally there, I can put that same thing. Uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's a powerful message. And when I first heard it, probably a few weeks ago kept thinking about it it kept just popping into my head and I was getting an emotional response now if I'd have had my drawbridge up I would have stopped the uh, initial negative response that I had and the pain, the emotional pain I experienced when I was told that what I was doing was pointless, which I've been told. Uh, I've been told that it's not worth anything if I'm not earning any money out of it. I've been told that, and it's painful, I, it hurts. But if the drawbridge is up so no, none of that stuff can hurt, then it's also up so none of the, the nice stuff can come through when someone phones someone sent me a message years ago out of the blue saying what you did uh, my my mum uh, spent the last three, year, three months of her life listening to your relaxation sessions and it really helped her thank you and that was it that was the message I was like, wow. A message recently, a young lady said, oh, I just want to thank you. You made, I asked you to make a recording for, to help me with self-harm seven years ago and you made a recording and I just want to thank you because I stopped and I still stopped. And I went, she was like a teenager at the time, I think. If I had the drawbridge up, that wouldn't be able to affect me. And I want it to affect me. I want, but also I want to be affected. I don't want to make this just about me, but I just, I want to be affected by things. Not in a way that causes extreme anxiety or stress. Of course not, because that would be ridiculous to want that. They, who, no one. 
Who would want that? Nobody. But sometimes it feels a little bit like, and I've talked about this in the past on other recordings. You know, if you maybe, you know, you stand on a hose pipe and the pressure builds, or if you put your thumb under a tap, even though the tap's just on drip and, you know, it's practically invisible, maybe you can hear it every 30 seconds. Put your, your thumb under there. Eventually, the pressure will build so much and you'll feel like your thumb is moving, trying to be pushed off. And then it'll move a little bit and the water will just spurt everywhere. Pressure. That's kind of like what anxiety can be like. It's built up because it's not being allowed to flow naturally. It's natural to have stress. It's natural to feel upset about stuff sometimes. It's natural to feel wonderful about things sometimes. If someone said something rude to you, why, why, what's wrong with feeling, feeling it? Why, why is that a bad thing? It's not nice. It's not comfortable. It's not pleasant. But isn't feeling it better than repressing it? Like holding your thumb against the, the tap. Repressing that and then repressing something else. Isn't it? acceptable to just allow or preferable to allow the feelings to flow and kind of just see what happens because you can always put your thumb back on the tap you can always pull the drawbridge back up you know, that is an option. Just like if you go on a, a diet and decide you're not going to eat sugar anymore and you're not going to drink fizzy, fizzy drinks or chocolate, eat chocolate. That's a choice. And you have a choice to go and buy, buy a bar of chocolate from the shop if you choose. It's a choice. Only you can decide that. But you know that's a choice. And when you realise it's a choice, it kind of takes the... Uh, for me, that would reduce the discomfort. Compared to not having the choice. Being told that you can't have the chocolate. That you can't ever Even someone's got a medical condition. And, you know, they've been told, you know, you've got diabetes, for example, and you have to be careful what you eat, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a regulated diet and all that stuff. Still a choice. Some people say they might think, well, it's not a choice because I have to do this, otherwise I get ill. But it's still a choice. You choose what you do next. Always. We all choose what we do next. Just because the... The result of a bad choice could be devastating. Doesn't take away the fact that we have... The, we have the choice to make those bad decisions those terrible decisions that could cause catastrophic harm to ourselves 
and we choose not to do it. It's still a choice. We choose what we do next, always. And when you re when you know that, when you actually get more in touch with that fact, it's not an opinion. I believe it's a fact. We really do choose what we do next. We just maybe we're not aware of it. You know, if see Andre, Andre's just climbed on me again, and I'm cuddling him. I choose to stroke him underneath, if it, you know, under his chin. I'm doing it. My left thumb, I'm stroking him under his chin. I don't have to do that. I prefer to do that because it keeps him quiet so that he's not jumping all over me and trying to rip the carpet up or trying to bite my toes or something like that. But I could let him do that stuff. I could let him run around making noise, which is not really what I want as a background for these recordings. So I'm stroking his head now and he's happy. He's relaxed, he's calm, he's got my nice boring voice in his ear. It's a nice relaxing home that we've got and he's happy. He'd probably be happier if I gave him more food, especially if it was chocolate. But he's not really allowed to eat chocolate, so I don't give it to him. It's a choice. If I gave him all the things that he liked to eat, he would be ill. He absolutely loves milk. Whipped cream, especially the ones out of the spray cans, that's like crack cocaine to him. He literally would do anything to get his hands on some whipped cream. Loves it. It's absolutely, seriously, and it sounds silly, but he absolutely loves it. Makes him ill. Because he's lactose intolerant. He's not built to be able to eat, you know, drink milk or anything like that. But he loves it though. And he'd be so happy if I did it for him. His stomach wouldn't be. And if I did it regularly, he might not be around for long. Because he'd get very ill. But that's a choice. He, you know, he doesn't have the knowledge to make that choice for himself. Because he's a little ferret and he doesn't know about lactose intolerance and stuff like that. But we were, we're lucky as humans to have a different kind of brain. And to have that drawbridge up, which is what I used to do, it meant that I was, I didn't, you know, I had less stress. I had less panic. I had less of everything. It was almost like living like a daydream, but not in a nice way, like a, a non event. Just being a bit numb and once I decided to let that drawbridge down as a test, I did have the pain and the pleasure. But it was a steady flow and anything that was difficult passed, always passed, always 
went through me, you know, it kind of... If you think in a way of... Andre's making weird noises now. If you think of problem, you know, problem issues, stuff that you're worried about, uh, that may be happening soon or maybe it's happening now, difficult moments, think of it like sweet corn. It might sound a weird thing to say, but when you eat sweet corn, it passes through you. And anyone that's had sweet corn knows that it just goes straight through and it's still sweet corn. So problems are very much like eating sweet corn. It just goes through you. And then it's gone. Just like pleasure, pleasure doesn't last either. But that's kind of one of the good things about it, because you can look forward to the next time that you have pleasure. So if you have a particular pleasure which involves a loved one, You know, it might be something like going and watching your child play football, as an example, or gymnastics, or seeing them in a play. And that football match is not going to last forever. But you can look forward to the next one. That play. It's not going to last forever, but you can look forward to the next one. You go for a beautiful meal. It could be the tastiest meal in the world. It's like wonderful. It's not going to last forever. You can look forward to the next time. If you just remember that you haven't had the best meal of your life yet. You haven't had the most interesting conversation of your life yet. You haven't experienced the best day of your life yet. The best is always to come. You haven't felt the most relaxed that you'll ever feel. The best is still to come. So instead of thinking back to the past, thinking, oh, things will never be as good as that again. They will, they'll be better. The best moment of your life hasn't happened yet. The funniest thing in your life hasn't happened yet. The thing that made you laugh the most hasn't happened yet. The, the best physical feeling that you've ever going to experience hasn't happened yet. Which brings me back to the very beginning of this recording. Why fear fear? When it's natural to sometimes be scared. It's natural to sometimes get angry. They're just feelings. That's all they are. Just feelings.
here's something that I, a little technique that I use. And I tell people this, I'm around some sometimes quite aggressive people uh, where I live uh, with various different issues and and I say to them yeah, they, they'll tell me about how someone said something to them and you know they want to uh, respond aggressively and I'll just say to them look and these are these are adults if I said if an eight-year-old child rode past you on a bike and shouted exactly the same thing, how would you respond? And the answer is generally, well, I just, it can go from, well, I'd find it funny, which is quite a good response, because it changes the way they think. But then it could be, well, well, I'd do nothing. It's just an eight-year-old kid just acting up. Well, that's just a, that's a 39-year-old person just acting up. You don't have to do anything. Just think of them like you would an eight-year-old child as being naughty you don't have to do anything it's like reframing it looking at, at it in a different way which changes how you feel you know, quite quickly and the way we feel can be changed very very quickly You know, I saw this, um, I was on the bus, I think it was today or yesterday, it was yesterday I think, oh, I forget, I've been been on a bus a few times this week, and we stopped at the bus, a bus stop near the train station, and there was this man with a big, big dog, and he was let's just say I think the dog was stronger than he was he looked like he was quite struggling to kind of keep control of the dog and when the bus pulled up the dog was really barking and looked like he was um, wanted to attack the the bus driver I, like, I couldn't understand what was going on and I thought oh and then a couple of people get off the bus and there's this old lady or elderly lady and she's got a I think she's got like a walker or some kind of uh, you know I don't know if she's disabled some disability or anything but she was getting off the bus and it looked like the dog was about to attack her it really did look like that and I was watching and I thought oh my goodness because this bloke who was holding the dog the dog was dragging him along and I thought oh my goodness what's going to happen there completely wrong the dog started licking her face it was her dog or I guess maybe it was her husband that was holding the dog the dog was excited the dog knew that she was on the bus before the bus even pulled up to the bus stop the dog was barking at the bus before it even pulled up so I guess the dog could smell her or you know how dogs are my feelings changed instantly from being I was quite anxious if I'm honest with you I thought I was about to witness something you know was I going to have to go out there trying to help but you know it's hard when you've got a dog like that it's I'm not really a dog person you know sort of as, as in controlling dogs but I got it completely wrong 
and this happened quite quickly so this wasn't like I had lots of time to think and straight away instantly I realised what the reality was and I'd say my own my whole physiology my whole physiology changed in an instant from stress to well I found it funny funny that I assumed that you know a completely different scenario to what reality was I wasn't to know what the reality was I didn't I'd never seen any of these people before and I have seen dogs similar to that situation who were out of control so it wasn't a huge stretch from the imagination but I was wrong and the way I felt changed in an instant so I think we're lucky to have brains that can do that that can change how you feel really quickly and I think that option that brain facility that uh, that wonderful thing that the brain can do is only available when that drawbridge is down and open when you're open to any kind of emotional experience bearing in mind that the emotions come from you not from others we 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 create our own emotions as a response to what happens outside in fact it's not only what happens outside as I'm sure you agree is the amount of uh, emotional responses I've had just to a thought that I've had and the amount of times that I went into panic just by thinking that I might go into a panic And you know it still happens sometimes. Still happens. And then I calm down really, really quickly. And there's a part of me that's a little bit embarrassed to say that in a sense of me making these recordings there is a part of me that thinks I should be completely fine completely fine and never have any anxiety or stress ever no panic ever in order for me to help other people that are going through what is at times absolutely awful an awful experience I mean, it's the worst experience of my life was having, you know, big anxiety attack. Nothing matched it as far as, as an adult, feeling completely out of control, thinking that I was going literally crazy, like my brain was malfunctioning. And my body was malfunctioning as well because it wasn't just a brain thing but sometimes even now occasionally I'll be eating and I'll think oh and the thought comes to my head what if I what if I choke on this food and my swallowing stops and I have to cough the food out I don't have to cough the food out but I do do that then I have a drink of water 
and I carry on because I know it's just a thought but that thought had an effect my own thought it didn't come from outside it wasn't something that someone else said it was just my own thought in that second and it came for no reason that I can think of and maybe I was just feeling a bit stressed at the time and I, perhaps I wasn't so aware of it as I could have been you know there's a meditation it's called a meditation practice for a reason mindfulness mindfulness practice for a reason it's a practice you keep just got to keep doing it keep practicing relaxation keep practicing being aware of how you're feeling keep practicing being kind to yourself keep practicing positivity positive thinking in the same way as you don't just have one bath and then that's it you have to keep having another bath afterwards you know the next day or a shower otherwise you end up getting smelly and dirty it's the same with our thinking it's the same with all that stuff it's you don't just have one meal and then don't eat anything for a month you have to you know you might feel so full up but five hours later six hours later you'll be ready to eat again so it's just something that needs to be kept going so not being afraid of fear not being afraid of feeling whatever feelings arise and I know that Rose Roosevelt is it Rose, he you know the president when he said those words the only thing to fear is fear itself and he was talking about obviously fear is in itself is the thing the only thing that that's the thing that hurts is the fear not the actual thing perhaps that you're scared of it's the fear itself that prevents people from doing some things in their life and enjoying their life and taking chances and taking risks that's kind of where he was coming from as far as I'm aware it was more like motivational you know just go out and do it don't don't let your mind get in the way of your happiness don't let thoughts which are only temporary stop you from being happy so this has been a, a bit of a a bit of a muddle of stuff a few little ideas floating around but it only takes one sentence that resonates with you in order for changes sometimes profound changes to occur and then when you keep thinking about that thing a positive thing keeps floating around in your mind and you keep remembering it for example it could be you choose what you do next you always choose what you do next so in that case you can't be a victim In 
in those situations you choose of course there's consequences for everything we do so you know if someone doesn't like their job if they decide just to not turn up for their job then they might lose their job so it's, that's a consequence of doing that but they choose if they go to work they choose to go to work and to me that takes away the stress it takes away the the victim mentality of I have to do this I've got no choice so once you realise you do have a choice about everything you do next the next thing you do is chosen you choose to do even if it's an unpleasant thing you choose to do it and that can change something from being unpleasant to being neutral being oh okay I'm not loving this at the moment so what can I do to change this situation maybe look for another job change whatever is giving you that feeling that you're not enjoying what can you change so that could be one thing that maybe you float around in your mind you choose what you do next or it could be about the drawbridge let the drawbridge down or the thumb over the tap or let things just go through you and try and stop the feelings just let them flow like sweet corn going through your body just let it go through you it's just feelings or maybe you could have in your mind floating around that you haven't had your best day yet still to come the most pleasure you'll ever have is still to come all the best moments of your life are still to come the best moments haven't happened yet I'm going to go thank you for listening and I'll probably speak to you again tomorrow probably I seem to be doing these fairly regularly so thank you very much remember to be kind to yourself remember to be gentle with yourself Lots of love. Bye.